the basic premise was Swamp Thing was always a man who got turned into this plant thing. And he goes, well, what if it's a plant that thinks it's a man instead? Mm. That all started because I just asked where to start reading Swamp Thing. And, you know, the best in-betweens are when I just turn the record on and we start talking. You should do uh, that. A little bit. Of that. I started mid-conversation, but still. <laughs> I, I turn to my nerdy comic book boys and they tell me what to read because I'm I'm nerdy. I just don't know as much as they do. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at... Uh, I, I got a... The thing was, I was telling them I got a year and a half or year and a half or two year free thing to comiXology and read digital books but I'm like the thing is about that that service that is not the best they don't have every title on there but at the same time they have a lot of stuff they had Swamp Thing I just didn't know where to start with it yeah there there's one like five books I think let's see here while you look this up anybody before we get into the main topic anybody watching anything that's interesting. I'm laboring my way through season four of Stranger Things. Yeah, it's a little bit. Are you not enjoying it? It's okay. It, I it, thought this season I'm was just, pretty strong. I'm just having a hard time finding time to sit down and watch an entire episode. You? Yeah, I know. Well, I mean, I have other things to watch. I have other shows that I'm enjoying. It, it, I, I know I've mentioned this on a podcast before, but when I get home from Zeus at six or seven o'clock, mm -hmm. I then make dinner, mm -hmm. typically. Uh, Chris makes dinner a couple of nights a week. Dinner takes 30 minutes or more to make. We sit down, we have dinner. I've got maybe 40 minutes to watch something before I have to go to bed to get up to start right. the next day. And a 75 minute episodes do not work for me. Well, I, I was it, did it take a while to get everybody in the house to sit down? Because it is Abby's favorite show. Yeah. Or amongst her favorite shows. Yeah, it took a little pulling to make Shelly come in there. But we were able to do it and get through. Um, we, I, I thought it was pretty strong. I thought, uh, you know, the good thing was is they tapped back into the, the, that show works best when it's saying, hey, we're stepping into a new phase in these kids' life, almost like it, life changes. You know, we go through these mm -hmm. things. So that if it started as Amble and now they're up to Nightmare on Elm Street kind of elements of it. Early, uh, early in the first, like, second or third episode where Dustin is trying to explain that strange things happen in their town. Mm-hmm after this one incident happened, I felt like that should have been the start of season two and not season four. Because now we're, we're moving into a uh, Twilight Zone-esque situation where things are going to weird happen in this town, but we're season four. We should be wrapping things up going into season five, not announcing the fact that, hey, this town is crazy. There's weird things here. Yeah, but at the same time, you're bringing in a new character and you have to find some way because they're about to see weird shit to at least allow them to understand it. You're either going to tell them ahead of time, hey, you're going to see some things you're not going to believe or when after it happens and they're freaking out, you go, oh, th then Dustin can turn and go, you haven't seen anything. It and could be that, but you have to do one of those two things here, for new characters. Here's the other thing that's a little bit of a problem for us. The room, our, we call it our sunroom, where we have our TV. It's, it gets potentially very bright in there, uh -huh. and light will coming from behind can shine on the TV. And that show is very dark. It is a very and dark so show. And so unless, it's, for us, it's better either watch it when it's overcast or when it's more towards the evening, but then once you do more towards the evening, that's pretty much your evening. And I'm spoiled of the fact that you I got have that a room that has no blacked window, out, so yeah. I can just black it out. And I, I don't experience that, but I can imagine, as you say, that, yeah, that'd probably be pretty Yeah, hard so, to I mean, last night we were watching uh, the second episode, and it's when they kept on going back and forth between the upside down and here, and J.J. was going, what's going on? And I had to get to an angle where I could see the TV yeah. without the light hitting it and go, yeah. okay, this is happening. He's being, oh, and he's floating in the air now. Uh, yeah. The, uh, the thing, one of the criticisms I heard from people that were coming to the store quite a bit about season three is they didn't like the uh, multiple plots that were going on with the characters, and the characters themselves were somewhat scattered. And season four is kind of repeating that same trend in terms of the fact that we have all of these new characters and they're trying to give everybody screen time as opposed to getting your core characters some focus. I mean, this the Scooby gang is not back together again. I do agree. I do, I, I, I do I, appreciate the fact that they're charting these kids' paths because that's what happens. I was about to say, because, you know, think about it. The friends that I had at that era right. didn't stay my friends through high school, and you felt those weird ties of I'd see you and we wouldn't talk to each other. Mm -hmm. So I, pre I think I, I appreciate do. that side, but I, I, I get it why some people want Look, I want this, the, and the I Scooby want Scooby Gang. Yeah, yeah the Scoob, I think you calling it the Scooby Gang is is precisely it. I just if that's what you want. I just watched an entire episode of this show. Uh, it's the episode after 
It's the episode where they go to visit Robert England, mm-hmm. and the episode where uh, uh, Max kind of gets saved. Mm-hmm. And the only key characters in it were Dustin, the kid whose name I can't remember, the basketball player, Lucas, Lucas, and uh, Wolfram's sister. What's her name? The the editor Nancy. of the newspaper. Nancy. Yeah. Those are the only three core members of the show in that entire episode. Okay. We don't get 11. Yeah, but how many, did you like Battlestar Galactica until it decided at the end that it didn't know how to yeah. end it? There Every were now shows you where focus, you didn't see Starbuck. Yeah, there, sometimes you, you focus on some characters. It, it's you just, don't know what it's the second show that's no longer focusing on on its core. But you don't know what the second half of the season has to do with other characters. I, if I'm um, going to make it there, I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I'm. I, I'm enjoying it. I'm just kind of a little annoyed by it. Now, I, I, I thought that because I I thought that second the second season was pretty bad. I thought it was oh let's tell the same story again, let's do the same situation, right. and I was like boy this is going bad. Season three I thought was better. This season I thought oh look they're actually taking chances and evolving things. Now I also think I think the weakness more than splitting the Scooby Gang apart is getting away from Hawkins. You know, we, we need to get right. out of rush. It's got to get that, that stuff's got to be wrapped up. Hawkins and that mystery, if you will tell it is a compelling story Correct. and that's what needs to happen. So my, my hope is to Sean's point, you got two major episodes and you want to talk. Have you seen how long these last two are? Like They're supposed two to be two hours hour. long. Oh, yeah. Cause Shelly looked it up. Yeah. She was already like that. And she's like, uh, one of these is two hours. I said, great. We're watching a movie. You know, yeah, shit, yeah. it's just a fucking movie. Okay. Hopefully, they're gonna draw them all back together. The the one of my customers commented on the Hopper plot in Russia being just kind of unnecessary, and that's like that should have been like its own episode, right? Yeah, right. It's one of those things where they're interspersing this thing, and they they uh-huh. take the tensions off of what's happening with their characters by then jumping over there. And I'm like, I, I you're you're you're. I'm losing interest in and out as they jump around to the plots because they're not maintaining the same type of tension throughout right. the episode. I'm always dubious of a, a idea that where everybody thinks a character's dead and yet we see we know, that yeah. Not, yeah. that's a weird emotion to play. Now you can pull it off. I'm sure. That, I'm sure somebody could find an example and say, "Well, here's where it worked." I don't know that it's working for me because I don't feel the sorrow of him being dead. I mean, there, there was something interesting of the when. Uh, um, I'm bad with these characters' names. That's all right. It's because you're away mom. from them for so long. Yeah. Uh, when mom gets the weird Russian doll. And the letter. Just make it something bizarre. She starts hearing voices on the radio. She starts hearing stuff in the static on this that Hopper's right. trying to communicate to her. Not a literal physical go get Hopper kind right. of moment. A ransom note yeah. thing. Like it would that like that would be interesting. Like what's what's the weird thing happening with Hopper? Is he live? He's so, not live. Don't show him to him. Uh, like in the second episode, the kid with the scar on his face, um, he he starts seeing a cop look like a zombie and calling him a murderer and you kill people. I looked at my wife and I said. I promise you, if I ever see people starting to look like zombies, I will tell you immediately. Right. Please tell me as well if you start seeing people look like zombies. I'm not going to say you're crazy. I'm going to say let's sit down and talk about it. But don't just sit there and see worms coming out of people's face and their eyes turning white and be you're okay like, with that. That's eh, all right. Yeah. yeah. Which that made me think real quick. Abby asked me one time, hey, how's The Walking Dead? I said, first season is really pretty solid. After that, it starts be- becoming a regular dose of shit mm-hmm. mixed with a little bit of a nice piece of chocolate you know nah. you can't tell which is which but you you go it's, with it it's like a pie from the help it and she so she watched it and she, at first she loves uh john barenthal she's uh-huh. like oh he's dreamy i'm like well that's great there's a 19 year old <laughs> girl's reason for watching but then she i asked her said how's it going she went i stopped mm-hmm. and i said why and she went because i found the shit and i was like i told you, you would. <laughs> and real quick i gotta say this before we turn on to the topic of the day two things i'm watching because I love the Godfather, they made that the offer. Behind, yeah, it's kind of the behind the scenes making of, and it's a fictional retelling. Except that, have you seen? Any I, of I it? haven't, but I know what you're talking. The show. It, so Al Ruddy was the producer of the Godfather, and there have been stories that he had to actually grease the palms of mobsters mm-hmm. who were basically threatening to kill people and shut down because they thought it was disparaging to Italian Americans. It makes. His contribution to that film so absurdly over the top. Like he was the one who did everything. <laughs> he did everything. Peter Bart, who was the right hand to Robert Evans at Paramount, has even said 
My recollection is that Al Ruddy never even showed up to the set. Oh, wow. And it's like, shit. You know, Peter Bart is like top dog shit of, of that era, of that perfect era of the 70s. It's just bizarre. And now, it's been a lot of fun because you're seeing dramatization of this. But, geez. And I'm going to tell you one thing. If you want to have yourself upset because I'm already predisposed towards religion, kind of makes me feel ooky. Under the Banner of Heaven with Andrew Garfield that's on Hulu, mm-hmm. where it's based on a real crime case of the murder of a Mormon woman and her 15 month old child is one of the most disturbing fucking things Uh. because, and it's because of religion and the ties to it and what people do to protect their thoughts and beliefs. If you feel like watching a true crime thing, they'll upset you. That's your one. All right. um, We might check it out. You've talked to me about it before. It's Um, really, this one's really good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, All that aside. Now we are going to shift gears so much. Here it is. (laughs) This just kind of came up randomly when we were talking about uh, in between the episodes themselves. Everybody was taking a bathroom break, and I, I, I mentioned to Todd that I had actually gone down a rabbit internet search hole looking up Viking braiding for my hair. Uh-huh. Which I told him, I'm like, please do that. I want to see you do that. It's not quite long enough yet for How long does it have to get? Pretty. I mean, I've got it about down to my shoulders he almost. Can't, not he quite. can't do a Padawan braid yet. So. I've, got it, I've got it down to my chin for sure, and maybe just a little bit close to my shoulders, but it's got to be a little bit longer than that in order to get a good braid going. I don't know where to go, but then that kind of jumped in the topic of this idea of like grooming and I'm currently letting my hair grow pretty long. I'm now about three. When the lockdown started in 2019, yeah. So I'm now three years into this. Yeah. Is my that hair's, three years worth? My of hair's growth? my hair's been going for three years now. Okay. Right, March to yeah. of 2019 to 2020 to 2021 to 2022. Yeah, three years. It's so it's so weird when I see pictures of you online with short hair, and that's the way I think of you often is short right. hair. Except now when I see it. It looks so damn weird to see you that way. Well, and when I when I finally do cut all this off, it's going to make me look like 10 years younger. <sighs> like, it's suddenly going to, like, unage me uh, a lot, de-age me a lot. Anyway, tell us about your rabbit hole. Well, so I was looking up Viking braids, and um, there's really freaking cool stuff out there. Uh, uh, but that we jumped to men's grooming, and I talked about manscaping, mm-hmm. and specifically this ad for this device that I'm surprised you guys have not seen because I cannot escape it. It's called Manscaped, and it's an actual grooming device that's being peddled to men to trim your nose hairs, uh-huh. your beard hairs, and your nether hairs. And and, uh, that, and this is the one, I'm just going to advertise it, Manscaped.com. Manscaped.com. Promo they, code uh, Minute of the Apes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't, don't we wish. Yeah. There's a crop cleaner uh, I think they even sell lubricant. Um, they have grooming devices to make sure that your uh, uh, your your um, balls. Just your, say it. <laughs> I was, just I was say trying balls. to dance around Come it. Come on, your, <laughs> there is no dancing around when Sean is involved. Uh, oh my god, it, it has a light on it. Boy, you got to see what you're doing down there. You don't oh. want to go in blind. <laughs> Come on, what are you crazy? Hey, I'm putting the spotlight on. <laughs> <laughs> So so anyway, I, I got a, I got a coupon pack, uh, one of those coupon mailers that you get to your house, and it had like Casper mattress and some furniture online store and you know some salon, and it had an actual one of these things for Manscaped. I cannot escape, <sighs> I cannot escape <laughs> I the Manscaped. <laughs> but that's my question is interesting. It's an interesting device that's now being peddled to men to use. I mean, you see what their logo is, Todd? Don't you? I mean, Where, I didn't even look at the logo. Uh, go go back to the main page and scroll down under the shop now. A little bit. And see what it looks like. My computer is really responding slow for some reason. I think it's because I record on this machine. Just show me. There I go. Oh, yeah. my, it looks like an upside down heart, but those well, would be testies. They'd be dolls, balls. The uh, the the interesting is that somebody's finally able to actually produce a device like this and get it kind of in the mainstream. But honestly, men's grooming like this has been going on for a long time. Like this well, isn't, this is new. When, when that brings up that the other swimmers day, were doing it to get sure. to, to work on aerodynamics. But there was that term metrosexual that people were using for a long time. Metrosexual. Uh, metrosexual. Uh-huh. Yeah. That, you know, men that were taking care of themselves more than the average man. B- bodybuilders would, in order yeah, to, to make themselves look better. That was always what it was. There were the the swimmers, the bodybuilders that did that, and, and normal men didn't. Models, Mo- okay, right. But this also brings up the other day that I I told Sheldon, you know, nothing really surprises I me. Mean, you're not going to offend me with much of anything unless you're ugly to people and harm them, right? 
but we're sitting there and all of a sudden she walks off and a commercial comes on and it literally is it's for a women's razor and on a commercial and she was probably watching something like friends so whatever network that's on need to trim your pubes and that's <laughs> what the fucking commercial said i was like wow well they cut to, to the, the chair, point yeah. like what well, pubes we it's not even pubic hair pubes, pubes. and i was like okay <laughs> this is a totally different era of which we live but I, but it's been going on a long time. I mean, it's like it, you, you, uh, women have been, you know, grooming or train or, yeah. or trimming for a very very long time to try and have kind of smooth legs, mm-hmm. uh, smooth uh, pubic areas, lady, lady parts, lady parts. Right. This is not new. But you can also, uh, uh, you know, era people by how big their bush is, both men and women. Like, oh, I know what era we're watching oh, that's right from the seventies, yeah, 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 because in the seventies. Um, but it's, I mean, it's very, very common for gay men in particular to have been grooming, uh, their nether regions f- far back as I can remember. Right. There's always the rumor there's even a, you there's shave even your a, pubic hair cause it makes your dick look bigger. There's even a trend. There's even a trend right now in the last couple of years to have it completely shaved off mm-hmm. to the baby smooth. Uh, okay. As a, as a guy that, I mean, I've got hair. Yeah. I, I, too hairy for Sh- that. Sean and I, I don't know that you, you have a hair on your I arms. I have hair on my arms. You just can't I, see it. I, and you have a beard. I mean, I'm just one of those guys that I'm I'm hairy. I have hair on my chest. Mm-hmm. I, I I am too fucking lazy. Yeah, to I don't have it. the time or inclination. But at the same time, hey, if that's what is right for you. Mm-hmm. And now this also, I have to tell a funny story because you talked about Bush and whatnot. Uh-huh. We're we're very honest. We raise our child like, hey, we talk about everything, right? And and one day she asked, so Papa, being my dad. Did Papa give you the talk when you were a boy? And my wife just busts out laughing because she knows the story. And Abby's like, what? And she went, oh, you don't know your dad's afraid of pubic hair? And Abby's like, what? And, she, <laughs> and I said, you have to understand, dad's a psychologist. The way he taught me was to bring in Masters and Johnson's uh, the uh, Art of Sex, of Life of Sex, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And the illustrations in it literally had a woman. And I mean, it looked like somebody had taken a lion and put it between her legs. Yeah. <laughs> to the yeah. point where I was like... Oh my God! And to this day, so if you talk about those eras, when I see some woman show up, I'm like, it almost jolts me backwards. It's like too much. But I don't think you have to shave it away. Let's segue back to this. <laughs> for, for men or for women? Either one. You know what? It, it doesn't bother me if, if I don't find I don't find pubic hair unattractive. I, now, obviously, if you're walking around and it's from hip to hip, it's like okay, that's a bit much. But what about armpit hair? Men or women? So I try to be accommodating because I've seen that that's actually a trend now more for women to let that grow naturally. Uh-huh. And I try to be like, okay, th- that is nothing more than me expecting of them something that's been pushed. So therefore, if they want it, then go for it. I don't find it super attractive. And I, it's hard for me to move beyond that. What about uh, back hair? On men or women? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was waiting for somebody to go uh. there. <laughs> that's the weird thing. Because I won't lie, I had some, and Shelly paid to. Help. It was a because she knew I hated it, and of course now as I got older, some's growing back. But uh-huh. it's like, why? Why do we care that? I, yeah, I got much? a big old, I mean, because because I think we're ingrained for some reason to think that hair that is not on your head or face, or we'll say arms, and... is is gross or filthy or dirty when it's not i mean chest hair is natural pubic hair is natural i mean you get hair in your butt crack that's natural too and i you know people shave that off if they want to but i it help you people just, bleach their buttholes yeah i mean you got all kinds <laughs> i mean of, i just <laughs> i just think we're thought to think that hair uh, that's not face is gross is is automatically dirty even though it's just the same thing in a different place i mean when it comes down to it i you and i have beards that are rather similar we don't necessarily shave away i don't like the sensation of shaving every day but i also i am not of the type that can maintain Uh, what sean does i can't do it well and mine mine would grow out mine right now wouldn't have much color to it all but i do have to say when i was looking up viking braids i I would have to grow some type of facial hair really? to go along with it. Yeah, they're, they're, they're no clean-shaven Vikings. I mean, it doesn't have to be like a big beard, but it needs to be a little bit of something. You looking just, at Viking braids? I have no, never, no, no. I've never run from being a guy that has facial hair, all this kind of stuff. But at the same time, I'm so fucking lazy. 
That's why, that's why <laughs> I look at something like this, and honestly, what I thought was, uh, also as you get older, nose hair is a bitch. Oh my god! And, and so I look oh, at that, that and, they, and ear hair. Oh, I don't know ear hair. hair to, when was I? Why was that not on? You know, biology one hundred and one when we were kids and learning about the birds and the bees. Oh, by the way, when you get older, you're gonna wear hair on well, your hair. Well, and the, you know, the, the, I'm sure the manscape has a tool. One of these look like a nose hair trimmer. One of them looks like a yeah. ear hair trimmer. Mm -hmm. and, sure. and, and I so what, to that point, I, I trim down my beard every other day so that it stays short. So and you don't you don't shave, you trim it. I shave just right here because I can't stand that feeling. Okay. Just so under my neck, it's almost like I have to the people listening because you can't see it. I have a beard, but it's trimmed incredibly short, like it's a day, two days growth. It's double, yeah. Um, but I was looking at that, I thought, well, nose here, this, you know, I, th these look like great products that I would be, in, I'd invest in if they don't cost eight gazillion dollars. I mean, you got to have the stuff. Why Why do we even have to be sheepish about it as a guy? It's like, I, I turn my hair, I shave my, I shave my face. Why can't I have something to shave and turn my hair? The and, rest of and it. your ball sack. And nah. your ball sack. Except, boy, I am just not. We're, we're also all married. Yeah. Yes. It might be different if we were, we're single. single. Yeah. That's true. It might be very, very different if we're single. We're trying to attract the ladies or the men, as it were, as it, as it were you right. know? We might be giving into some of these trends a little bit more than we were if we were younger. Um, I, I I don't have ear hair, but I did think about this. You know what lovely weird thing I inherited from my father is? What? I get one hair right on, on your my nose. nose. Yeah. One, you and it, it? it comes in about every three months, and I look and it's there, and I Pink. pull it out. Oh. But Dad, you know, Dad is now uh, eighty eighty six, and so his gets long, and I uh -huh. always want to get a pair of tweezers and just yank it off. It's like, <laughs> what what is that when when men Tend to get a little bit older and tend to stop paying Caring. attention to those kinds yeah, of things those, like ear hair, or when your eyebrows get so crazy. Yeah. I think yeah. that's of that age. You know, Dad being eighty six, old enough to where men didn't do that. In fact, my dad, I wear my hair rather short on the sides and everything. He'll walk up and go, "Why do you do that to your hair?" And I'm like, "I just have a short haircut, Dad." Yeah. It's, you know, they don't think like that. There's a man should just do this, and it, they definitely don't manscape. I can oh, tell you, sure. my oh, yeah. dad's bush oh, yeah. is probably like over to his ass. Well, no, I mean, uh -huh. there's well, the, okay, there's he pulls two, it up as a blanket. <laughs> there's two type of men that you see, uh, two type of men that you see out in the wild, not wearing shirts. And the, oh. and the first one is the fitness enthusiast that's a jogger that might be doing CrossFit, that might be at the pool, that might be doing that kind of stuff, and they're typically twenties or thirties, and mm -hmm. they are typically well groomed. Yeah, mm -hmm. or. The 60, 70, 80 year old man mowing their lawn in their cut off jean shorts from 1970 that are not wearing a shirt that don't even give a fuck anymore. That yeah. brings up here, here's an interesting like question. Like hair on you. their back and their shoulders and their chest. And it's all gray and they don't care. So I saw a guy yesterday at a. Not good or bad, just is. I'm not going to say who this person is or what I was doing in in the ever so slight likelihood that he was in the my yard. Me. I was wondering that. Hey, I'll, I'll <laughs> always tell you I'm in your, your yard. This guy shows up older guy wearing a tank top and he has hairy shoulders uh -huh. and here i am a guy that just told you what i've had done to my back and that maintaining that is not always easy i found myself kind of going, ooh, right why why do i do that that is his body it is allowing him to sustain life his body has a genetic reason for producing that hair but i am revolted by it okay so <laughs> Why he also chose when to, I have it he too. also chose to wear a tank top. Yeah, I'm a tank top. A tank top is in. a tank top in itself is a choice. Yeah, and why would you why would you wear uh, Birkenstocks if you're going to put socks on your feet? Some people like doing that, but you know what I'm saying. Like like, like you're, yeah. you're, you're making a conscious choice to wear a tank top. So what statement are you, are you making by that tank top? So do you do you then like trim or not trim? In order to wear a tank top, are you wanting to advertise that you have? I mean, they're they're. Are lot. you just not giving a that, shit? There's that too. They just don't give a shit. They it feels nice in a tank top. Yeah. They don't mind their hairy shoulders and how my dress, how I dress, is no concern of yours. You, you except I have to look at you. God damn it! No, you don't. You can look the other way. Close your eyes. But uh, but you know, uh, there, there's also on some level, um, there are men that are attracted to men with body hair. So yeah. I'm not saying yeah. this person that is gay, too. but that's a po that's well, not uncommon to see in the gay well, I mean, community. It's kind of like men wearing tank tops and willing to wear show when off hairy shoulders because they know that it's attractive. When right? you see adult men complaining about how children dress and you go, well, her skirt's not low enough because you're seeing your knees. 
if you're an adult man, have a problem seeing children's knees, the mm. problem is you, not somebody else. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, my nieces, they would prefer to run around naked all the time if they yeah. could. I mean, they're, they're like kids. They're like, uh, oh, it doesn't yeah, matter. they don't they're give a shit. About that. Yeah, Abby it's, came it's, out yesterday, you know, and looking super cute. The, the big thing was uh, she just bought some Tory Burch sandals. And yes, I am the father of a yeah. daughter. I know brands and whatnot. But she wanted to wear those. And she, she wore a little tennis skirt with a tank top and her mm-hmm. little midriff showing. She's like... Do you think I look trashy? So I, I'm like, I think you look adorable, you know. And if somebody looks at your little tummy and thinks that you're disgusting, That's they're on the one them, having yeah. the disgusting thought. You aren't doing anything. You're not carrying a sign that says I'm a slut. Here I am. They're imposing that upon you. So when it comes to that, and I knew, even when I asked that, I thought, I, I think that's I'm asking even of myself. You have th- this situation with hair. Why did that person discuss you? And I think it said more to the person. I don't really care for the person a whole lot. Mm-hmm. And it was just kind of like another, you know, we find reasons to go. Ugh. So it's just sometimes when I uh, see people making a choice like that, that I myself would not make, uh, I find them very bold. I'm like, oh, I can admire that they're, that they are so comfortable. Come from their they own are, skin right? that they'll wear that. But they'll, yeah. that they'll, that they'll wear this. I, I, this is, this again, is going to say more about me than anybody else. When I see people that um, have, a little bit of weight and have no problem wearing skin tight clothing. I'm like, all right, this is this. I'm I'm glad that you feel this. Is, you wanted to wear that particular outfit today, also, that you bright top, and you look good. Yeah, even if it's not necessarily super flattering. To also, you. you don't know if it's laundry day. I don't give a shit. Yeah. It's laundry day. Um, that but that brings to the point too. And, you know, and I think that changing those narratives in your head because my wife um, work. She my she wife. walks almost every day. Now, she'll come back and be like, it just wore out and it pissed her off. But she said, I need to change my narrative. And so now when she sees anybody walking out, out working out, her immediate thing is, good be, for you. Good for them, good, yeah. Good for right. you. Yeah. And, and changing that thought. And so when we see a person like this, it's like, oh, you look comfy. I hope you... And, and, but if you tell yourself these things enough and you actually follow that path, you can begin to believe them instead of judging it. Right. And it, I think, you know, obviously we all spend far too much time looking at the other person and saying... Well, I mean, you did it's, something it's, that offends me. Blah, it's something blah, blah, blah. that you know begins in middle school and junior high, where it you're is. constantly making fun of the people around you for their choices, their fashion mm-hmm. choices, their this, their that, their weight, their uh, their body hair, and so it just kind of continues on through adulthood. And at some point, hopefully, we've we we grow can, out of it. We can kind of, yeah. We, yeah, we can become yeah, mature about it. Yeah. But then, but then, of course, then we have social media, which basically begs us all to stay in high school for the rest of our lives. Then we have just, products that are telling us to groom ourselves, yeah, right, right. to shave our. You're balls. too hairy. I did appreciate the fact that that's you can use that in the shower. Do you see that part? It's uh-huh. much easier to groom in the shower. And I'm like, you know, oh. I actually don't have one of these. I have just a normal trimmer that I use. Yeah. yeah. All right. I, here's Good what, on you. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, I, I've never shaved my chest beyond that. I years and years ago got asked by the American Heart Institute or study or to be a part of an ongoing study, and they they call me in every few years, and I get all these heart things for free so that they can look at it. Right. They make me shave my chest occasionally. Uh-huh. What I can't fucking stand is the growing out phase, and it's so itchy and and whatnot. Is there some? That's why you. That's why you close close crop it instead of actually shaving it, like you do your face. You don't. You don't take a. You razor don't go to the to skin. You, you do. don't take a razor to it. You take a, a a zero on your on your trimmer and get it so low that it's not going to matter for their. Devices. Yeah, but even then, if you when it starts to grow out, does it not itch at that point? It doesn't. I've gotten used to it. I guess it doesn't bother me. Really. Yeah. Do you shave most of your body? And I know you do all kinds of workout and all that. Do you? No. Is that too much? Is that too personal a question? No, no. I mean, I don't, I don't shave my arms or my legs at all because the hair is so f- fair mm-hmm. that you can't even really see it. Uh, but going to the gym and working out, and, and particularly in a, in a room full of people that are also all shirtless half the time, mm-hmm. yeah, I like to make sure that I don't just look a overgrown, hairy mess. Sure. But also, it's also very pale. It doesn't stand out too much. So I like to keep it a little bit trimmed. Yeah. Okay. Particularly as a single, is a little more common. Mm-hmm. I just feel like I'd be in there all day shaving it all the way. Well, you, you Shelly, could you, you bring also, me lunch? You also have a lot darker hair, so it stands I out a lot more. I do have very dark hair. Yeah. Uh, what I keep hoping, though, is like, because my beard is mostly gray now, except for one weird patch. And if it gets long enough, it looks like literally I have like <laughs> a blotch here. Um, I keep hoping all of this will gray out, and then you just won't be able to see my hair on my body anymore. Well, yeah, it'll yeah. just be white. It'll be weird looking. No, I'll be. I'll look like a, uh, a Yeti. A, you'll look like a Yeti. Yeah, exactly. Wait till you start getting gray pubes. I, or wait, I don't have any. I, I that's the okay. So a little bit of gray on my chest. Happened to you? Yeah, I've got a couple down there. I haven't had that yet. I'm me either. Uh, the chest hair, middle of the chest, a little bit, but. Yeah. 
Where do you get? But gray? Sean, how long have you been gray now? Oh man, I mean, I went. I when looked, we first met, oh, you're you were the baby dark-headed. of us too. Yeah, um, I looked at. I mean, I've been looking at. I see pictures around here from like when JJ and I were dating and stuff like that, and I wasn't gray then. No, so I remember that too. It would have been in the last 10, 15 years. I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah, something like that. And Sean is the baby. Yeah. And how I, much I turned 50 then? July 9th. Are, is it yeah. 50 this year? Yeah. Oh, wow. Happy birthday. Yeah. Happy 50th early. By the time this comes out, it will probably already passed. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, no, this is so we've done now three weeks, and our rule is six to eight weeks. But this movie's a little longer, so we might want to get like 12. I'm not sure. Maybe we'll go for eight to 10. All right. Anybody got anything else? No. All right. Everybody groom happy this week. We'll be back, hopefully, churning these out faster for you guys. So, everybody, have a great weekend. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye, everybody.